What's going on, 3800 friends and family? It's Engine Bay Dress Up Day. We got our W Body Specific Engine Bay Dress Up Kit. That's gonna consist of these uh, 12 bolts in the front and your two strut tower bolts. And then we also are gonna, we got our Supercharger Dress Up Kit, specifically for the Gen 3 and the Gen 5 blower. So keep that in mind when you're checking out. Um, let's get into it. Opening up the engine bay kit. This is applicable to all W bodies. So 3800 LS4, 97 through 08, it'll fit your core support for your diagonal braces, your dog bones. LS4 guys, they'll just leave four bolts out because you obviously only have one dog bone. So per Trevor's request, we went with the red anodized for our 2002 GTP. So here's what we're working with. Get a nice Allen fender washer. There's 12 of these for the front. Then we got these two big guys for the top. Strut tower. For those diagonal braces. Okay, so now that we got all of our bolts out here, 13 mil takes these off, 15 on the top. These top ones, they're gonna wanna break. If they don't come out for you, don't be afraid to pop the tire off. Get some heat on the bottom side, they'll come right out for you. Now, I am going to do these one at a time, because obviously these upper engine mounts are holding the engine. You could do both at a time, but you're gonna to need to hold the engine while you're doing it. Gonna need a magnet to chase these guys out of here. Get our new M8 started in here. One side done, we'll move on to the other side. Check it out. It's what we call Mobetta. Okay, so now that we've done the, uh, the upper dog bone mounts here, one at a time, tackle these diagonal braces. Well, there you have it. Total of 14 pieces. Complete the uh, engine bay dress up. If you have a 3800 with an M90 on it, you can order our Gen 3 or Gen 5 blower kit, which we're gonna install next. Um, it'll also come with properly length bolts, whether if you have a full size intercooler or a short stack intercooler or no intercooler. If you have a phenolic spacer, the one inch, you're gonna to wanna to order for a short stack intercooler. But yeah, this bolt kit is for all of the bolts on the blower, including the hub bolts if you have one. If you don't have one, just throw them in the glove box until you do have one, because you need one. We got the engine bay kit installed. Moving on to our Gen 3 full-size intercooler kit. Also in the anodized red. 
Um, we're gonna try and do it on the car. I don't see any reason why we're not why we couldn't. This blower and intercooler is all sealed up well, so we're just gonna do one bolt at a time. Um, obviously, if you had the engine apart, it would be a much easier install. First things first, unhook the battery because I am gonna move that alternator out of the way, and uh, we don't want it sparking on anything that it doesn't shouldn't spark on. With the battery unhooked, we'll move on to the belts. 15 mil on the tensioner there. Get this out the way. Also a 15 millimeter for the alternator. You just gotta get this off because we are gonna re be replacing these case bolts. Like I said, easier if you got the car apart, but it is doable together. Alternator out of the way. We'll have access to all of our snout bolts. Okie dokie. So our blower base kit is gonna do all of your bolts on the whole blower. Everything that holds it down, everything that holds it together, including the vacuum trees and whatnot. So we're gonna get into it and do the hard one first. So, and we're just gonna stick with that one at a time method. So laid out here, we have the snout bolt the M8 washers that'll do everything we need. These are for your vacuum tree and or the fuel rail if you're still running the stock fuel rail. And then these are our hub bolts. And then obviously that those bad boys bolt the blower down. If you're unsure of where all these go, just double check your lengths, obviously. This one's just slightly longer because to make up for the thickness of the washer. But it's pretty hard to mess up. Now, here's something worth mentioning. You have our belt wrap kit. Um, go ahead and just reuse these bolts that are already with the belt wrap. Meaning you'll have three of these left over. If uh, you don't have the belt wrap, you'll obviously need the three bolts to complete it. But uh, there's enough threads on these to add a washer, which is what we'll do.
take that pulley off. These uh, bolts that hold the pulley on are red Loctite. Be a good idea to put some blue Loctite up, or Loctite back on there when you reinstall it. Okay, we got our supercharger snout bolts done. Just putting on our belt wrap pulley here. And like this entire process, we're just gonna do the one at a time. Now, we did adjust the length of all of our supercharger bolts for the added washer. So even if you have our, like this car here has our bolt kit already, you're gonna wanna replace it with what comes in the kit. So for the Gen 3, you can see we got a pretty common size here for the front row, the back row. There's just two oddballs. One goes by the throttle body, one goes by the snout. Grab our washer. These bolts do go into the aluminum lower intake, so keep that in mind when torquing them. Yes, there is a torque spec, but when we're using intercoolers, it's usually best to just get them as tight as you possibly can. Helps prevent leaks. Too tight, likely. Leaks, none. Making sure your supercharger and intercooler don't have any leaks is extremely important for a good running car. If you have any leak in here, that's unmetered air entering between your MAF and O2 sensor and it is not going to run well. Your fuel trims will be whack, it won't idle, it'll stall out on you at stop signs. So make sure to always use our ZZP Garlock gaskets with a little bit of RTV you can see peeking out right there. So we're also, before we move on to the back, we're gonna be replacing these on your vacuum tree and your bypass valve. That is what the short M8s are for. They share the same cup washer as the rest of the kit. And like I did mention earlier, if you have the Gen 3, we also include the uh, fuel rail bolt. We're gonna leave that out since we got some logs on it. All of these are the same length. M8 by 20. Next step, bypass valve on the front, two bolts here. Keep in mind, see how this bypass valve is closed right now? We can clock this based on these bolts. So make sure when we're, you wanna make sure when you're done that the bypass valve is closed or else you ain't gonna get any boost. I guess if it is already closed, we could still stick with our one at a time method. And that would keep you from having to re-clock it. Not that it's a tempting thing or a intimidating thing to do. It's something you should always check. Again, these are bolts for all these, all these M8x20s are the interchangeable. It doesn't matter what ones go where.
We're gonna have one left over. That would normally go there. It's looking good. Moving on to the back side here. We're gonna do uh, the two miscellaneous. This one on the snout side. And then this one here on the throttle body for the Gen 3 is gonna be your longest bolt. Gen 5 is different, the longest one's over here, but easy enough to line them up. You really can't do it wrong. Um, there's only two that are different lengths and they, you can't mix them up. Finishing up the back with the standard length. If you have any questions, contact customer service at easyperformance.com. Shameless. Whoop, whoop. Ryan Deere, take care of you. Okay guys, one quick thing to note, we wouldn't recommend using an impact gun running in any of the blower bolts. We did on the uh, core support, just for sake of uh, time and convenience, with uh, the Milwaukee on setting one. But uh, as far as torquing the supercharger down to the intake manifold with an intercooler, we always find that the factory torque specs aren't enough. Um, I just, I just hand tighten with a 3 8 ratchet and basically just feel it out. Um, you want it really tight, start in the middle, work your way out. We're doing the one at a time method because this blower is already sealed, but if you were to be putting this on for the first time, start in the middle, work your way out, just like a cylinder head. And uh, yeah, the, the, the factory specs are a little low for an intercooled application. Obviously, if you didn't have an intercooler, by all means use the factory torque specs on our bolts. But uh, yeah, just a quick side note there, we're gonna finish up the back. While installing this Gen 3 dress up kit, we got to the very last bolt and realized that uh, the fuel pressure regulator does indeed need to be out of the way for this last guy down in here. Just one thing to note while you're doing it, um, finish the, uh, the supercharger bolts themselves or you're gonna have to take this back off like I am going to have to right now. So if you look down in here, Trevor, here is the last guy that this fuel pressure regulator was just in the way of. Let me get that out of there. And that will complete our 3800 bolt kit, dress up kit, look good, heck and go fast kit. All right. Tightening down this last supercharger bolt. I'm gonna make my way around and just make sure they're all snug. In 
back to what I was referring to. You're gonna need some fresh silicone or make sure your O-ring's good there. Now we have our core support, engine bay dress up kit in. We got our Gen 3 supercharger dress up kit on. It's time for my favorite part, the hub bolts. We're running a 2.7 pulley on this XP cam build. And it's gonna complement that ZZ Performance pulley just fine. Get these loose. If you can't get them loose, put the belt on. That'll hold the pulley for you. You just gotta get your bear grip out though. If you have our standard hub, just like the rest of this kit, we did make these bolts longer to compensate for the washer, so use the new ones. All right guys, we got uh, the hub on, we got our supercharger bolts on, everything else. I'm gonna toss the alternator back on, hook up the battery, put the belts on, get you guys some glamour shots. 